Hey there. Start here. Uh, as promised, I, I said if I was able to get my, my day one rank one that I would share it with you guys. And uh, yeah, sure enough, this boss turned out to be a cupcake. Um, so I, I, I'll show you how I got it. I haven't even finished farming yet. I mean, look at that. <laughs> I, st I still have EX coins in my rewards. Uh, this is kind of sad. I, I, I think... Um, yeah, I think we're we're definitely seeing a decline in the uh, quality of the content. Not just the quantity, but the quality of the content is also on the decline. I mean, you know it's bad if I'm able to get rank one on day one. That's usually a pretty bad sign <laughs> for the for the Clash of Wills uh, boss. So um, yeah, I'll show you the the team that I I, um, I got it with. So here's the team. I you know it was a little different from the the team I had planned because uh, as usual I. I I'm still not in the mindset of thinking about focus units. I thought I had two focus units, but it turns out Roka is not a focus unit. Um, so she's kind of worthless uh, <laughs> on, in, in Clash of Wills, if you, if you don't mind me saying. Um, so I had to, had to find another focus unit, so I, I found um, Flaring Ether Rain. He does get focus because he's a JP anniversary unit. Uh, and so then I was able to throw in Frosty as another damage dealer. And so, um, yeah, basically it's still a dark team. Everything else kind of stays the same. Abby's going to be tanking. Uh, Heo, Frosty bring, you know, the majority of the damage. Uh, and then, yeah, Rain uh, is a focus unit, a little bit of extra damage. Um, yeah, the rest of the team is pretty self-explanatory. Um, Abigail tanks, Melissa buffs, support, dark support and uh, Ellis Bears breaks and does all that, that fun stuff. So let's see how we get this done with an all mods clear. Okay, go ahead and turn on all these modifiers. All right, um, I'll, I'll show you the gear at the end. Let's just go ahead and get through the clear and just show you how it works. And then um, I'll, I'll show you guys, I'll go over the gear at the end, all right? Um, also, just saying, I've only I've only run this team twice. The the, the first time I ran it um, died on the last turn. <laughs> of course, I mean it was my first blind test run, uh, so I, I wasn't even expecting to get that close to a rank one. And then yeah, nailed it on the, the second run. So this is this is the third time I'm running this team. Um, you know, it, it it may not even be optimal, but uh, you may find ways to optimize and make this team work even easier. But I'm just gonna show you how I got it done. Uh, so Abby, on turn one, uh, we'll go ahead, we're gonna do contingency plan, we're gonna do drone cover, uh, and we are going to do, what, what was the other thing we were gonna do? Anti-magic mechanism. Um, Rain here can just do, he's just gonna, yeah, I think he's just gonna hit the boss. Uh, Melissa. All right, she's gonna do shared immunity for ailment resist, chronic flow to get the morale flowing, and parasol shield for all of those lovely typed mitigations. So between Melissa and Abigail, we have all of our bases covered on mitigation. So M Melissa does uh, beast and dragon at 55%, Abigail does beast and aquatic at 30%. So um, we're, we're pretty good there. Uh, Ellis Sparis, she'll go ahead and imbue herself with dark. Um, Hemomancer's Delirium and Hemomancer's Vengeance. Uh, the Delirium does the 2500 morale fill and the Vengeance does the auto 85% break every turn. Um, let's see, Frosty's gonna imbue himself with Dark as well and then just uh, hit the boss twice. Um, Heo, it's funny, we have we have three breakers on the team, like Heo, Frosty, and uh, and Ellis Barris. It's pretty funny. So we'll do Crimson Undermine for the 89% breaks and then just uh, Breaker Claws uh, to hit the boss and to fill up some morale. We haven't imbued ourselves with Dark yet, but uh, Frosty will hit the boss with Dark, don't worry. All right, uh, so boom, boom, boom. Yeah, it, it honestly doesn't matter. We're not here to deal, to deal any damage to the boss. So with all the mitigations, we should be pretty good. Yeah, you see that, that turn one is probably the most most dangerous turn we will experience the entire fight. The rest of it, it's it's just going to be a cupcake fight. Okay, 
Um, this turn, um, we will let Melissa go ahead. Uh, she's gonna do Bardarcha, make sure we have our 200% dark buff. Um, we'll do um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, Abyssal Blessing to start the ramp, because we're gonna do one burst uh, on turn four, then another big one on turn eight. Um, and what was the other thing she was gonna do? Um, Shelga? No. I think we were just gonna do another shared immunity for the morale fill. Um, and then here we'll just do, uh, we'll do drone decoy and anti-physical, anti-magic. Okay, um, Rain is gonna do Grace of Will for the buffs. Um, for our, our turn four burst and then double pulverizing. Um, Alasparis. Uh, I think on this turn she's gonna do Killing Ground and then just, um, yeah, double blood strike. Here we can do, uh, we'll do Solitary Sword Dance for the mod boost and then double Defiant Blade. And, oop, it's not what I wanna do. Heo, we'll just do Break the Claws. All right, and that should take care of everything we wanna do. Uh, we should very easily hit um, 175% morale on this turn. Uh, that This boss does not fight against your morale very much at all, so should be good on that one. And yeah, we should be good there, yeah. All right, I think we're looking good. Um, Yeah, we should have like 180 or, or more morale at this point. Yeah, 186. So it's like easy peasy hitting the going into mania mode. And that's kind of critical with this team too. Um, because we don't have any focus plus units, we just have two regular focus units. And so we need, uh, I think it's like five turns to build up three gems uh, in order to get into to bonus time. Okay, so there's magic damage, it's whatever. Uh, Abigail just shrugs it off. There's some hybrid damage in there as well, but again, Abigail just shrugs all that off. All right, um, on this turn, Rain will do focus energy. We're gonna start building up that focus. Heo is gonna do it as well. Heo also is a focus unit, so he's gonna do focus energy as well. Uh, Frosty on this turn. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. he can just do, hmm, I guess we can just do Defiant Blade, we'll do a Katana Flick too, just for some extra damage, why not? Um, we'll just do Triple Blood Strike here. Um, we're not really worried about doing too much damage on this turn, to be honest, but, um, We'll go ahead and do Beast Killer on Frosty. He oh, not Human. Dragon Killer on Frosty. Uh, and... What else do we want to do? Get a Bardarcha last turn, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, let's just go ahead and do another Shared Immunity. We could do Minutes of Light, too. No, we don't need to do that. All right, Abigail does her SLB for all the uh, mitigations. Um, I think it's, yeah, he still has his price. That's good. All right. There you go. Little chip damage, you know. Not much, but every little bit counts. This is like half the battle is just waiting for all of these like focus and vertex abilities to be cast. <laughs> it's kind of annoying really. I wish there was just like one, one cast and that was it, but yeah. Uh, so there you go, you see we're, we're taking very minimal damage here. Um, 
And starting on this turn, we're going to take practically nil, because Melissa's going to imbue the boss with dark. Uh, so like I said, we're going to do a little burst here, so let's do, uh, we're going to do all consuming darkness, all right, because the boss is going to do a, a, a heal after, because we're going to push the 80% threshold and the boss will do a heal, so uh, we're going to cut that in half, it's a small one though, it's only like 6%, I think, but, you know, every little bit counts, right? We'll do beast killer on Heo, dragon killer on Heo, all right, Heo is going to shift to do his Brave Shifted LB. All right, we'll do SLB, SLB. Um, and we'll just do Triple Pulverizing Force. I mean, Rain's still, you know, still the king of just sustained damage per turn with that Pulverizing Force. Um, Abigail will just re-up her cover. Um, drone decoy and we'll do anti-physical to maintain the physical mitigation. It's not that it's really important because, like I said, the boss is imbued now, so all the physical damage will just heal us. So that's honestly not all that important. Um, but yeah, we'll just go ahead and send her. Um, and so yeah, we'll do, we'll just send our, um, extreme Nova Chainers and then send Flaring Rain after that. Pretty much, pretty easy peasy here, so, um... I always leave Hio to be the uh, last one since his is uh, tag chaining, so it just makes sure everybody falls in the chain. There you go, nice chunk of change there. Yeah, about three bill, that's pretty standard. Because the boss is in mania mode, so it's all of its stats are increased, right? So it's a bit bulkier. Um, you can expect to do about triple that damage when we're in bonus time, so that kind of gives you an idea of what you're your bonus time damage will look like. My gosh, all of these casts. All right, so there's a head regeneration. Uh, that's the heal. Um, and then it does, yes, yeah, some more uncoverable magic, some uh, water and dark, and then some AOE physicals, which are converted to heals. Very nice. All right, so the boss does have this undispellable full buff. Um, so don't bother trying to do any kind of perfect dispel. Definitely don't give Heo like blizzard orbs to counter or anything like that. We don't want to dispel the boss at all uh, from here on out. All right, um, because you don't want to dispel the imbues, um, and, and you can't get rid of the full the, the full buff anyways. It's undispellable. Um, it does only last for a couple of turns, so you know, no big deal, no big deal. All right, Melissa, on this turn, I think uh, we'll just do... Ooh, what does she need to do? We'll do Shared Immunity, make sure we're keeping up with that. Uh, we'll do a Shelga to make sure we've got... Actually, we don't need Shelga, do we? Uh, we'll do Bard Darcher to make sure our Dark Resists are still up. Shared Immunity uh, for Ailment Resist, and we'll just do Curse Control to make sure that we, uh, we have a, a Dark Imbue for the remainder of the fight. Um, okay, ba, ba, ba. yeah, we'll do that. All right, Abigail, on this turn, can just do drone cover. Uh, we don't need Shelga. Let's do anti-magic, anti-physical. All right, Elisparis, uh, I, think, I think from here on, we're just gonna kind of do some chip damage for a bit here. Pretty much all we need to do uh, for the next few turns. Just don't use Katana Flick. Make sure you do not use Katana Flick. Um, we can use Glacial Snap for the 89% breaks. Might as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, Heal will come back. It's not what I wanted. And just do Breaker Claws. Uh, rain. We'll just do Pulverizing Force. Yep. And that should be pretty easy peasy. We can go ahead and do the um, the morale attack mag buff so that our chip damage is, you know, at least doing something. Okay. 
And as you can see, morale is like just not an issue at all with this team. I mean, you've got Flaring Rain who does a thousand morale every turn. Uh, Melissa's doing a thousand morale every turn. It's just it's not a it's not an issue. This boss does not does not fight you on the morale at all. All right, um, so yeah, there's some more AOE water and dark magic attacks. Um, yeah, it like imperils us, blah, blah, blah. Honestly, you can, you can basically ignore all of this boss's attack. If you have Abigail and Melissa on your party, you can, I mean, you, you basically defang this boss. All right, um, Abigail does her SLB again. Okay, Melissa is going to start another dark ramp because we're gonna do another burst on turn eight. So we'll start Abyssal Blessing. Uh, we'll re-up our Parasol Shield. Um, and we'll just do Shared Immunity one more time. Why not? Um, okay, so Rain is gonna go ahead and shift because he has a 200% Beast Killer buff in his kit in his Brace Shift form. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and up that. For him, just gives him a little extra damage over the 150, uh, and then double pulverizing. Um, Heo, um, he can just keep doing what he's doing with the breaker claws. Uh, Frosty, he's still got a one turn on his uh, sword dance. He can he can reimbue himself, I guess. Why not? Um, double defiant. All right, Ella Sparis. She can go ahead and reimbue herself. We'll do Hemomancer's Delirium again. Why not? And we don't have to worry about the Killing Ground because that's a ten turn. Uh, what we can, yeah. And then we'll just do Blood Strike. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and again, we can just do our Attack and Mag buffs. Okay, in good shape. All right, so next turn we should have a full full three gems, so we'll do our vertex ability and set up for our big burst on turn eight. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> oh, man, this is a boring fight. Okay, thank you for healing us with all of that physical, all the physical attacks. Okay, so we have uh, we have three gems as you can see up there. Flaring Aether Rain is going to be our Vertex ability. All right, so he's going to use Vertex Shield. Um, Abigail, go ahead and re-up her cover. Drone Decoy and Anti-Physical. So do we have a... Uh, we do have Contingency Plan. Yes, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and put Contingency Plan back up. So let's do that. Drone cover, drone decoy. All right, Melissa is gonna go ahead and give some killers away. Uh, we'll do beast killer on Heo, dragon killer on Heo, and let's do bar darcha. Just make sure we have our dark buff up. Can't remember the last time I used it, so that's what I'm gonna do. Um, now, if I was thinking, I would have given Heo um, like Tyvus' spirit here, because he could do Tyvus' spirit to do another mod boost to his LB, but as you're gonna see, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so Frosty's gonna do Arcane Supplementation for the buffs, Solitary Sword Dance for the mod boost, and then just anything but Katana Flick. <laughs> don't do Katana Flick, because you don't want to dispel the bosses in view. I'll do Icy Grasp. Um, Ellis Barris does Deep Incision, which does the 90% breaks and the big, the big imperils. Um, blood Trap for all of the uh, weapon imperils, and then Blood Taint, because once again the boss is going to heal himself, so we want to reduce the healing factor. So that's what Blood Taint will be for. Okay. Love the blood splatter on the on the screen. Okay, so we're now in bonus time.
The boss does very little damage now because he has his stats have been reduced by 30% plus the 90% break, so he's like, you know, really don't have to worry about getting hit by anything. All right, so now we're ready for our first big burst. We're hoping to push this guy down somewhere around 10%. Okay, so we'll do uh, Dragon Killer on uh, Frosty, Beast Killer on Frosty, Seconds of Support on Heo. All right, make sure you remember to shift Heo to his Brave Shift. Okay, uh, SLB. SLB, um, Pulverizing Force, um, and then I'm saving Abigail because she's going to do Triple Bar Faraja to fill up LB so we can do another one next turn because this is not going to kill the boss. Um, at least in, in, in my last two runs, it's never, it's never come close to killing the boss, so we'll need another burst next turn, so that's what Abigail's going to do there. Uh, so once again, I do Elisparis, Frosty, and Heo in that order. Um, and yeah, let's see how we do. Eleven percent. Yep, yeah, pretty good. All right. Um, all right. We're no, not in fire raga. Bar fire raja. Triple bar fire raja to help refill some LBs. Because, you know, at this point, we honestly don't have to worry about incoming damage. The boss doesn't, you know, hits like a wet noodle. Even though the boss's imbue is worn off. Yeah, 8.7. Um, so there's the heal. All right, so the boss heal has healed back up to 23%. So you got to make sure you can do at least that much. I think, what is 23%? That's three... It's about four billion. Something like that. Four billion damage. So we should be able to do that this turn without any issue. All right, so Flaring Ether Rain just does Triple Pulverizing again. All right, Elisparis just does Triple Blood Strike to Chain with Rain. Uh, Melissa, she'll do a Bardarcha to help fill up LBs. Um, yeah, we should still be imbued. So Dragon Killer on Heo, Beast Killer on Heo. All right. Yeah, we should still have a dark Im imbue from Curse Control before, yep. Okay. Alright, so that gives us our LBs. Alright, um, I'm, I'm gonna hold off on, on Abigail, just in case we don't uh, kill the boss. She would do her SLB here anyways, so I mean, we can just... I can just have it up and ready to go. Just in case for some reason we come up short on the boss. He does have a full buff now, but we should still do plenty of damage uh, to this boss. And you cannot dispel that full buff, by the way. Okay? Um, but it doesn't have any kind of, like, mitigations or anything like that, so we don't have to worry about that. All right, so I'm going to start Elisparis and Rain Lip and build up the chain, and then send Frosty and Heo. Too easy. Easy boss is easy. Alright. There you go. Yep, yeah, five bills. So that was like 30%, right? Um can that be? Yeah, well 30% is 4.5, so we did like 33% there. 33%. Nice. Alright, there's your rank one. All right, Heo and Frosty carrying the, the team. Rain and Pelisparis just chipping in when they can, right? Um, easy peasy. Still haven't gotten my my rewards that I want. That's all right. All right, so let's show you what we've got. So I'm just going to turn on Party Elemental Resist. All right, it's pretty easy peasy. So Abigail, um, pretty basic build. You don't need Swordsman Celestite Cuirass. It's just, I have it, so I put it on her. Um, it is nice because it does come with the Bountiful Morale, which does 1,000 morale at the beginning of the battle. So, you know, and it has some Dark Resist, which is nice. Um, but otherwise, just build her for, for some resists. Um, she's got 370 water, uh, 170 dark, because we have the 200% dark buff from Melissa. So, you know, prioritize water over dark on that one. 
Okay, so that's how I built her. Uh, rain in his normal form, yeah, just full on damage, really. I mean, you, you do need ailment resist, so I love Chocobos is there for ailment resist, and that's pretty much it. Um, he does have, I think, full killers here, because he is a premium, so he's easy to, to hit, full killers. Uh, same thing in his Brave Shift form. I think it's the exact same build, yeah. So exact same thing. Uh, Black Submarine uh, is a handy one because it's got, got 75 aquatic, but you don't need it. Um, it's not necessary. There's plenty of other aquatic killers on there, uh, even though I know that's a limited materia. You don't need it. Last Guardian is, is great because it's got 75% Dragon Killer on it. That's from no, uh, Noel. Um, and that one you can easily acquire. Uh, again, yeah, full killers. Easy peasy. All right. Uh, Melissa's got Empress Celestite Rod and Treasure Memorial Ring for turn one morale fill. Um, but as you can see, morale was very, very easy to generate. Um, so even that stuff might not be necessary. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, her own vision card for morale every turn. Um, I put Herba's Boon on her because I thought she might, you know, just in case she needed guts. But as you can see, she did not need it. Um, Elisparis, um... Moonshade Earring is there for the ailment resists. Uh, the Dark Vision Katana. Infernal Battle Garb is good for beast killers. Um, Magister's Ring because she needs a chain cap boost. As you can see, she, she wasn't really dealing a whole lot of damage. Uh, her own STMR. Wing Clipping was from a previous uh, Clash of Wills. Gives beast and dragon, which is nice. Um, I put Wilkes Vision card on her for morale fill every turn. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So she's got... Yeah, full LB damage, 275 beast, 75 aquatic, 300 dragon, yeah. Didn't really didn't really build her for killers, um, so she doesn't really need it. Um, Frosty's got a katana in one hand, because we do have a 50% katana in peril on the field, um, but fist in the other hand just because it's a really strong weapon for him. You could do doubled katanas, but unfortunately there's not another really strong katana in this game. Uh, so a fist it is. Uh, Rundarine, that's from Submarunda. Uh, 75 attack with 50% aquatic killer on it. It's very nice, very handy. Um, yeah, some uh, one piece of clash gear there, and then just some killers. Soldier's protection is fantastic with 50% aquatic dragon. Uh, he's got the ice vision card. If you don't have it, just put the best thing you got on him. He is overcapped on beast thanks to Ifrit. Uh, 300 dragon, 300 aquatic, 300 LB damage. Good to go. Uh, Heo in his normal form, uh, just he gets all the best clash gear because he is the top damage dealer, filling out his killers. If you don't have Soaring Legendary Dragon, don't don't worry about it. It's just for the 75% Beast Killer. You can find Beast Killers anywhere else. That's just what I happen to put on him. Um, he has Rain's Vision card. If you don't have it, just put the best thing you have on there. He is maxed on killers, overcapped on dragon thanks to Odin Esper. Um, and then same thing in his Brave Shift form. Exact same gear. Nothing different. Yeah. Um, yeah, super easy. Like, this this boss did not require very much planning at all. Literally just went in and on the second attempt got a rank one. So, this is how I did it. Hopefully this is helpful to you guys. Especially for those of you that haven't pulled any of the latest units, like Hong, or, you know, if you don't have Chow or anything like that. It's like, hey, you don't need them. Just bring in some of your oldies but goodies, and, um, yeah, take this one down. So hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Thank you for following me, and I will see you on the other side.